Do 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 do. What's up, boys and girls? How you doing? How you doing? Um, I've been working hard recently, uh, giving a lecture on magnetism out in Idaho. Um, it's actually really, well, it's just organizing everything. I mean, I got tons and tons and mountains of material. Um, the most important thing is that all of us stupid human beings, well, not me anyway, we think that technology equals uh, wisdom or intellect. Um, invention doesn't mean that we actually have a correct grasp of how it works. Now, you can go to a billion dollar magnet manufacturer in China on their website and say, what is magnetism? Well, we don't know. It's like, what? Magnets are in everything that we own. Computers, TV sets, everything, right? Cell phones, every damn thing. How does magnetism work? What is a magnet? Well, we don't really know. That is the accurate answer. I have every book ever written on the subject of magnetism. Everyone. There might be some really obscure work out there and a handful of articles written by PhD students in the, the cult of quantum. By the way, this is a representation of a galactic jet here, the side view of a galaxy, which would be the plane of inertia. And here you have the hourglass shape in purple, uh, which would be the... Uh, the uh, hyperboloid, and out here you can't see it, but we actually have the toroidal magnetism. Interestingly enough, from macro to micro, and of course here's another side view showing the galactic jet, and it's undergoing geomagnetic precession, and this is called the Lamore frequency, but we, if we actually overlay a magnet over top of this field geometry, we actually have right here the plane of inertia. In the green, we have the hyperboloid, or the hourglass shape, and in the yellow, which I can't extend it out far enough, but we have the donut shape. From macro to micro, all perfect, uh, coherent, or literally point source geometries are identical. Um, there's the exact same diagram. Here's the specific geometry. This is a magnetodielectric cosmic geometry. And like I said, the red, we have the magnetism. Yellow, we have the plane of inertia. This, of course, is where the, the flat part of... Uh, a spiral arm galaxy would be all the matter in a galaxy. And on the uh, white, we actually have the uh, dielectric hyperboloid. It's extended out past the image, but we have the hourglass shape. Essentially, this forms the uh, magnetodielectric conjugate geometry of the hyperboloid and the torus. And together, I kind of wanted to call them a toroboloid. But if you actually take the negative image of one, you have the other, and take the other, and you take the negative image of that, you have the other. So the negative image of a uh, Hyperboloid is a torus. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. Together they form the conjugate geometry that actually defines the universe. Here's a view of a, a cube magnet on the left and over here is a ring magnet. And of course in the center here we actually have the exact same geometry. In the center, I made a video about this the other day. Specifically, so, I mean, uh, dielectricity and magnetism are, of course, necessitatively so one and the same thing. Well, sure they're not. They can be. You know, the dielectric moves towards counter space, and magnetism moves towards space. Well, sp magnetism is the dielectric field. The loss of that inertia uh, defines the creation of these expanding uh, loops that actually revolve around in the lowest pressure mediation. I actually have a diagram for that in uh, future videos, and the diagram in the video will be present in the lecture and also after the lecture. I don't want to give everything away in the lecture and stuff in the fourth edition. There's a lot of material. There's actually a mountain of material. But dielectricity is essentially the space eraser. Everything else you see here illuminated in light is the magnetism. Everything where you see the absence of light, or mostly the absence of light, is the dielectric. This is the constructive destructive interference of the interlacing of the magnetodielectric system of the torus and the hyperboloid that exists in the field geometry, the incommensurability of the field geometry, i.e. the point source emission and remission, i.e. force of motion, inertia, and acceleration of uh, convergent dielectric and divergent or centrifugal magnetism. But the magnet doesn't have the field itself. As uh, Nikola Tesla said, uh, all the energy belongs uh, uh, to the environment. By the environment, of course, he meant the ether itself. The, the magnet is not emitting a field, but for sake of convention, we can certainly say that's the case. But the ab extra field that is palpable with a Gauss meter outside of the magnet 
is not being emitted by the magnet, it's the pressure mediation that necessitatively exists or necessarily so exists uh, due to the pressure geometry of that uh, field coherency of the magnet and by the magnet, but the field itself is not in the magnet or being emitted by the magnet. Um, we have this notion that electricity is one thing, dielectricity another, magnetism another, and gravity another. I mean, what we call electrostatic cling, like for example, when a piece of a balloon will jump to your hand, I mean, that's the same thing us stupid human beings uh, call gravity. What is specifically dielectric acceleration or electrostatic acceleration of like pieces of paper when it's really dry, accelerating towards your hand, or a balloon jumping to your hand? You know, that is dielectricity, that is gravity. The same thing stupid human beings for thousands of years called magnetic attraction, where they'd take lodestones and little pieces of iron would fly to it, or nails, or magnets will jump towards another. They're not jumping towards another, accelerating towards one another, and that's not magnetism at all, that's dielectricity. True magnetism, if you wanted to call something true magnetism, would be the quote-unquote magnetic repulsion. The notion that there's magnetic repulsion and magnetic attraction is absolute absurdity. Also, the notion that a magnet has poles is an absurdity as well. This is where understanding field incommensurability and uh, um, incommensurability itself uh, is so incredibly important, since you obviously can't slice a magnet in two and have a north pole and a south pole. There's nothing located at any particular point in the magnet that necessitated pressure mediation requires an understanding of what force of motion is and inertia and acceleration and the plane of inertia. What is the opposite of space? Space is not a thing. To, to sit, make something funny that might make someone laugh, but make them remember, space is literally the flatulence or the farts of magnetism. <laughs> The only thing that has denotation that we would call space or magnitude or volume is strictly due to magnetism. As you probably read growing up in school, 99.9999999999 whatever percent of an atom is empty space. Oh, so we say an, uh, uh, um, an atom of anything is a giant balloon with a super, super tiny BB inside of it, right? The rest of it is what? Nothing? No, it's magnetism. Everything that has... Uh, it is the case that, for example, if we took all atomic uh, matter of the Earth and removed the inner atomic radius, that the Earth would be the size of a marble. All the matter, if we just removed everything, all that inner atomic... Um, I, and, of course, an atom is a dynamo. The notion of electrons or charge-carrying particles. Tesla said that was bullshit. So did uh, James Kirk Maxwell, so did Oliver Heaviside, so did Eric Dollard, so did Nikola Tesla. The notion that there are particles running down the power lines outside your house is an absolute absurdity. Um, then there's, there's no such thing as a charge-carrying particle. Electron microscopes, by the way, electron microscopy works by gold sputtering the actual subject and hitting them with a dielectric beam, and the reflectance of which is actually calculated. Did you know that... Everything in electron microscopy is gold sputtered, so what you're doing is you're basically creating an electrostatic reflector. Like if you want to do electron microscopy on an insect, you stick it in a chamber and uh, an ultra-fine um, uh, atomic gold is sputtered onto that subject so that you're able to actually electron uh, uh, microscopy the uh, subject for viewing. Most people don't realize that. Unless it's a metal object. If it's a metal object, then it's naturally a dielectric reflector. The notion that it, like an electron microscope is shooting an electrons, <laughs> shooting electron particles out is such absolute BS, it's beyond belief. Um, this is the cult of bumping particles. The point being is that people fundamentally don't understand, other than being brainwashed by the BS that they found in college and high school, this entire sicko cult, and that's what it is, it's a sick-ass cult, of bumping particles that Mother Nature is some sort of cross-eyed, demented, deranged, uh, scuzzy hooker, with a giant bag of unicorn particles, muons, gluons, tachyons, leptons. <laughs> this is such an absurdity. You would have to be, and humanity is not intellectually, invo intellectually evolved enough yet to realize the obvious, you would have to be a brain-dead billy goat to think that cosmic mechanics is, is all of these uh, sick-ass, strange, individual, autonomistic particles that are... In I mean, what a sick-ass joke. If aliens landed, like, God, these humans are stupid. This is what our ancient ancestors believed 10 million years ago before they evolved into sentient beings. 
The universe can't even work that way. Um, when you actually replace the ether, by the way, you have to replace it with particles. But it, it can't work that way. Instantaneous action at a distance, if you deny the ether, becomes impossible. But of course, instantaneous action at a distance is not only palpable, but of, observed as countless different scientific experiments. You know, you break the law of conservation of energy of supposedly light speeding back up. Well, photon part, they've even particleized light. Light is not a particle, it's a coaxial circuit, longitudinal dielectric pulse perturbations, and transverse electrical magnetic. It completes an electrodynamic circuit of dielectricity, electricity and magnetism. Electricity is only phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. It's a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. It is a self-propagating circuit, a hybrid thereof of dielectricity and magnetism. Magnetism is the dielectric field. So now we've eliminated out magnetism. We've eliminated out electricity. Only thing we're left with is gravity. Well, gravity is non-point source, incoherent dielectric acceleration. What we call magnetic attraction and what we call gravity are one and the same thing. They do have different properties. And the property difference is like, well, you know, magnets, I mean, two giant magnets about the size of my fist will jump together enough to break my fingers off. I mean, gravity doesn't do that. Well, the difference is, is when you actually have point source field commensurability, in the case of a magnet, it becomes multiplicative. What is another example of this crap, for example? Because like a 5-watt light bulb is useless to read by, but a 5-watt laser will burn your ass. Here is an attributional difference. Both a magnet and a laser say, well, a laser is coherent light. That's only descriptively and extrinsically accurate, but what light, uh, laser light is, is a point source light. Did you know before holograms existed, excuse me, before lasers existed, we were able to make holograms? The reason why we were able to make holograms before lasers existed is we used a mercury lamp, vapor, a light source, and then we used a single uh, pinhole to make the light point source coherent. Um, if you take incoherent light and make a point source and then you use a frequency filter, what will come out of it is no different than laser light. So it's point source, single frequency uh, illumination. Um, to call laser light merely coherent is uh, completely incorrect. People say, well, a magnet is a line domain, so we have field coherency. No, it becomes point source. And that point source incommensurability is not located at the center of a magnet, but it is field pressure mediated there because the center of a magnet is where no magnetism is measurable. And that's an absolute fact. And if you cut a magnet in half, you haven't cut it in half. All you've done is made two new magnets. If human beings had a stupid retroductive platonic and Pythagorean, uh, you know, a uh, dialectic brain, this is what we call engaging the dialectic, we'd be able to understand this fact. The point being, and I've not really used any big words in this video, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you used a lot of big words, you're trying to impress us. Like, no, I didn't. The point being is that nature is so, 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 so much more simpler than the sick out, the sick ass scientists. I'm not against science, I'm just against this sick cult of atomism. Scientists today are not scientists. What they are, however, are mathematicians. And mathematicians have this one religious rule. And that one religious rule, and modern science is a sick-ass religion, that one rule that they have is that if they can't count it or measure it, then it doesn't exist. And that's why they've atomized everything. They've particleized everything. And they've come out with a BS term, quantum. Quantum doesn't refer to anything. There is no definition of quantum, and I know the source and the origin of the word quantum. I know who came up with it, why they came up with it, so don't even try to argue with me there because I'll, I'll, ha I'll have a debate with you and I'll destroy you. Quantum does not refer to anything specifically. The term quantum is a completely meaningless term. If you replace the word quantum with blah, blah, we'd be saying the same. Well, we have a blah, blah interaction and we have this... <laughs> Quantum is based upon the supposed uh, presumption that we understood how light was, das Lichtquant, or light quantity. But light has no quantity. Light neither moves nor is there an emission of light. I mean, it's a field perturbation. To think that something emits light is absolutely asinine. It's as stupid as thinking that someone in the middle of a pond flapping their arms is emitting something. Well, they're creating waves. Waves of what? Waves of water? Yeah. Well, a wave is not a thing at all. A wave is what something does, not what something is. And a person in the middle of a pond is not emitting anything. They're flapping their arms or causing, in this case, the analogy of field perturbation. Water is moving. 
Waves. Waves of what? I talk about light waves. I love when people say waves. We have waves of the quantum interaction. Waves of what? Waves. Waves of what? Waves. Waves of what? <laughs> they still don't get it. You can take a P, and I've done this before. Take a PhD physicist with a long beard that he can sit there and stroke, and they'll talk to you endlessly about waves. Waves, waves, wa waves of what? Waves. Waves of what? Waves. I mean, you think I'm joking about this, but I'm not. So they'll say, waves. Waves of what? Well, we have waves here. Waves of what? What do you mean waves of what? Oh, you said you got waves. Or, yeah, we have waves here. Waves of what? <laughs> oh, they're so stupid. Well, I have a PhD hanging on my wall. Good, you're a dumbass. Papers are what dogs get. You know, back in the day, it's like, where, where did you get your degree from? I got a couple degrees, but I say, where did you get your degree? I got my degree from the same place Plato, Pythagoras, and William Shakespeare got their degree. Where did they get their degree from? They got it from the degree of the Hall of Wisdom. You either got it or you ain't got it, girlfriend. <sighs> this is an intelligent statement by a guy. He says, <laughs> a PhD physicist is uh, someone uh, who, who, upon being questioned, will offer you an image of his degree or the same person will offer an image of his degree without you even asking. In other words, they use their degree as a shield against, well, uh, this proves I'm right, it's my degree right here. Or before even talking to you, like, hi, hey, this is me and this is my degree. <laughs> Modern science is a sick-ass religion. Science is not a sick-ass religion. But science has de-evolved into this uh, religion inhabited by mathematics. It's like, it's like this uh, ancient building, it's like, say, of Atlantis existed. And inside of it were wise people and, you know, everything noble went on. And then it got abandoned. And then, like, the cockroaches and the mice came in. And, uh, and the cockroaches and mice proclaimed, look, look, look at this grandeur. We are scientists. It's like, no, nah, you're just a bunch of cockroaches in my... This is why uh, Nikola Tesla said Einstein was a beggar dressed in purple robes who stupid people uh, took uh, as a king. This is also why uh, Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot and a lunatic. Mathematicians are not scientists. Some scientists are mathematicians, but uh, mathematicians are not scientists. Um, they try to uh, particleize everything. They don't believe in something unless it can be quantized and stuck into an equation. And I'm not against equations at all. The equations actually help us uh, build stuff like this wonderful computer here. They help us do a lot of stuff, but they don't help us explain how nature works, or the nature of reality, nor cosmic mechanics, and no branch of science has ever defined a field, because a field is not particles, and a field cannot be quantized. You can actually uh, palpably calculate a field, but only as an effect over a period of time with a given vector, as the Maxwellian field equations point out. But no branch of science has ever defined a field. And that is a hardcore fact, kiddies. If you like this video, please click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff, or tell me to uh, jump naked into a, a swimming pool of razor blades and lemon juice. <laughs> There's a new one. <laughs> Goodbye.